Hey and welcome to my fourth Nepal vlog. Today I will be exploring Pokhara, also known as the city of lakes. It is the second largest city in Nepal. It is also recognized as the tourism capital of the country. Blessed by extreme natural beauty and home to three of the highest mountains on earth, Pokhara is the place to be if you are into adventure sports and mountain trekking. After a quick breakfast, our first stop is the Peace Pagoda. Hello, good morning. I am right now in Pokhara in a hotel called Utsav Himalaya Hotel, if I'm not mistaken. The morning is quite cool, about 9 degrees. We are waiting for the driver to get here and um, the destination is this Pagoda, which is um, quite a touristy place. So when we get there, we will decide if we're going to make the climb or not. After that, it's just open. We don't know where we're going to go yet. Plus, uh, we will be exploring a lot of uh, random streets just to observe how the locals do it and live their life. So yeah. How are you feeling this morning? The pagoda itself has rich history, but the real treat is the breathtaking view of the Annapurna mountain range. Only if you're lucky enough to go there on a non-cloudy day. Located over a thousand meters above the ground on top of Ananda Hill, we had to climb some steps to get there, naturally. Along the way, we saw several mini stalls selling local handcrafts like bags, scarves and accessories. You said this pagoda was made by the Japanese? Yeah, it was made by Japanese. How long ago was that? Yeah, we have reached there. I think we have walked uh, here for 10 minutes, right? Yeah, about 10 minutes. Yeah. Quite a um, relaxing climb. <laughs> The Peace Pagoda was built by Japanese monks back in 1973. Around the world, there are 80 Peace Pagodas like this one. Nepal has two, one right here in Pokhara and the other one in Lumbini, which is the birthplace of Siddhartha Gautama Buddha himself. It will be nice. So there's supposed to be a lake here? Yeah. That one. Yeah, that one. What is it called? I am right now in Santi Stupa, which is a um, pagoda. So Santi means peace and Stupa means pagoda. Behind me is supposed to be a lake called, what's the name of that lake again? Fiwa. Fiwa Lake and also the Annapurna mountain range, which we cannot see because I'm really unlucky today. It's really foggy. On the way down, I decided to make a pit stop at this very nice looking cafe I saw on the way up. Turns out, the cafe owner is a Japanese guy who has been living in Nepal for many years. I bought a drink and he gave me a short interview. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this looks weird but I'm just gonna have to hold it like this. Okay, um, so your name is Kazu. Kazu, my name. How long have you been here? Uh, Nepal is 10 years. Oh, okay. Uh, but this village, just five months. Five months? Before I was the lakeside, you know, tourist place, lakeside. Lakeside? Lakeside is uh, many hotels. Many, ah. many almost t tourists live in there. I see, I see. So you were working in the tourist? Uh, actually, I was pilot before paragliding pilot. Oh my god. Uh, nine and a half years. That's amazing. And uh, I quit five, uh, five months before yeah. and I came to. After training for four years in Japan as a paragliding pilot, he then chose to work in Nepal. However, due to stiff competition in recent years, he then decided to do something different and came up with this cafe. I was uh, very impressed when I came uh, up here because okay. it's just the kind of place that, that makes me feel like I just want to stay here for a very long time. Uh, Appreciate the view. Um, okay. yeah. So you're also Buddhist? Uh, no, I'm actually Muslim. I'm Muslim. I'm Buddhist. I'm Japanese Buddhist. I'm, this is Japanese Buddhist, right? Yeah. yeah. 
my tea cost 45 rupees, which is not even one US dollar. So if you're interested in visiting his cafe, you can contact him on Facebook by searching for Kazu Peace of Mind. I bid Kazu goodbye and went on to our next destination, Pame Village. Topographically speaking, Pame Village is only 11 kilometers away. In reality, I almost threw up 10 times because, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, the road was <sighs> murder. Our driver Sukur asked if I wanted to know where the fish came from. Probably something I should have asked myself before ordering the dish. Dirty but the fish I sorry? This is very dirty like Yeah it is. Yeah. Yep. This is as far as my investigation goes. I'm still alive. That's all that matters. Sufficiently re-energized with burnt fish from a nearby polluted river, we pressed on deeper into the village, away from the touristy picturesque views of the famous Fiwa Lake. As I walked into the village, I couldn't help but notice that while there were plenty of women, children and old people, the men were severely underrepresented. The reason behind this is a lot of able-bodied Nepali men have left the country to find higher paying jobs. Most of them went to work in Malaysia and the Middle East. The amount of money they sent back to their families is so much that in 2012 alone, Remittances made up 25% of Nepal's GDP. However, the migration has left an impact. In some villages, up to 90% of young men have left in search of greener pastures, leaving the women to take up all the work like farming and construction. On the positive side, female empowerment has sped up in some parts of Nepal. With less men around, women are forced to take the lead in the household and community decisions, like managing funds. This lady is making a traditional straw mat called gundri. It is widely used in villages across Nepal for sitting, sleeping and even eating. The straw is made of rice stalk harvested between November and December. Judging by the speed she's going at, the mat would take less than a day to weave. My friend's name, mm -hmm. Namuna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had to leave eventually. I was sorry to go. If being here has taught me anything, it taught me that we have much to be thankful for. Thanks for watching.